what motivates me is I have a haunting fear of shame. Oh, yeah? The shame that potentially I would be somewhere with my artwork, obviously, and I would bump into the people who I respect the most in the industry, the artists that I you know, admire the most. And they would go, oh, that's your artwork? And it wouldn't be my best. And then they judge my artwork from that, hmm. my skill, my potential from that. Let me ask you, have we introduced the podcast yet? No. no. Welcome to the latest edition of Pancom Podcast featuring me. <laughs> that was Mike Beltran, chili cook-off champion. Just one time. And alleged chef. Uh, alleged. We, That's good. You're alleged. a brick. Yeah. We are. We are jo- I'm Nick Jimenez. We are joined by a torch <laughs> and also Peter it's Santa lit. Maria. If you are a listener of Step Into the Sandbox, which is hosted by David Vidhano, another one of the uh, Dade family of podcasts. He was on this show. Who has also been on the show, famous for bringing notes, notes. to he this podcast. He brought notes. To this podcast? To this yeah. Pod- Can you believe it? You already know I what I should show this is. bro. Uh, there were things circled and lines connecting one idea. Hell yeah. to the I next. felt so um, just out of my league. I mean, he showed up with a notebook and who was notes. interviewing who? I, I mean, I'm not sure. It, I, it, it was, was it was a joint podcast. Was it sandbox was or was it? Oh, okay. It was, it was, it was yeah. It was it was, was a, a sandwich inside of a sandbox. Got it. That was the yeah, idea. There uh, you go. That was a sandwich inside of. I'm creative. I like this. I like yeah, it. it was a sandwich inside of. Or you were eating the sandwich inside of a sandbox. He's a serious guy, bro, and he Super knows his stuff. And when I first was talking to him a little bit uh, when we were doing the stuff with Strange Beast, I'm like, I better not slip up. This is one of these guys. This guy's a pro. You know, a couple. Yeah. Of, the rest of us are animals out here, and I feel like he's an actual pro. It's good to have guys like that in your uh, in your uh, circle. In your circle. So Peter Animals. <laughs> animals. So Peter Santa Maria. Yes, sir. Uh, is a fellow print- Columbus graduate. That's fellow, true. 2001. I, I didn't know about this until our our conversation right before the mics came on. Adelante. I'm, Adelante. I'm regretting Brother having Eladio. invited him already. <laughs> we are live. Radio Eladio. Do you masturbate? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> now you have to edit that out. <laughs> That's staying in. You know, my wife teaches there now. <laughs> no. no. Yes. Serious. Wow. So does I that, mean, does that mean cut it out then? No, I maybe. I don't know. We may have to I just know. repost it to their feed. Yeah. They do follow me, though. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. No. Time out. There are going to be so many other reasons you won't repost this to their feed. <laughs> Uh, it's all good. You're going to lose it. a lot of cred- credibility in I, your world by doing this podcast. No, I would actually say that this is, you know, what what I've been excited about as an artist, you know, and like establishing myself is getting the tendrils out in Miami. Like that was my first goal is to like kind of like spread out through Miami, connect in Miami and then start going from there. It just kind of happened the other way around. But it's still one of my biggest priorities is to connect here in Miami. You know, this is. I like being able to go into a restaurant, know the person who works there. I like having my art at a restaurant that I would go to anyway. Like I love the connectivity uh, of that. So that's that's why I'm excited to do this. So, In traditional fashion of Pancom Podcast, yeah. we've been talking for 10 minutes with zero context of what the <laughs> fuck we're talking about. Going on. I love it. Peter Santa Maria is a printmaking artist. We will get into a bit of what that means if you're unclear about what that means. Uh, but he is... I don't want to say better known because I know that it's not a name you go No, no, by, no. Yeah, it's the brand. But the brand yeah. is Attack Peter. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, I, again, we're going to get into all kinds of stuff, but uh, your work is all over the place from local breweries to uh, uh, partnerships that you've done with DC and Marvel. Yeah. Uh, so all kinds of cool shit. Uh, you have brought a, a very cool cap Thank over you, sir. here. For uh, me. For, yes, sir. For Mike. Uh, yeah, Mike is like being. Yeah, Whoever has more is. Instagram yeah. followers gets to keep it. That's how I choose. <laughs> well, I won. <laughs> no, Mike wins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, with with that context, I will step out of the way of this train wreck of a podcast. <laughs> Such a train wreck already. Yeah. We're also joined by uh, Carluba. Welcome to the party. Carluba. What's up, man? Nice to meet you. What's up, man? How you doing? Be like a lot of clapping. Awesome, like man. It's like Heck the yeah. laugh track. Like Carlo was here. We're just going to bring old, back no, audio of old Zach school. the Baker doing oh, it yeah. Africano. <laughs> old school Howard Stern style. They would just go like this. WNBC. WNBC, bro. That's good. 
Thanks for doing this. No, man. I say it all the time because uh, I'm still shocked that people listen to this fucking podcast, but people do. Hell yeah. It's uh, it's shocking to me. And I, it's even, gr- for me, I am so happy to hear this. Another Columbus grad, it's just incredible class of 01. Class of 01. Now, that's an important point because I feel like uh, that there's a special breed that comes out of that school. And uh, <laughs> if you, if you, especially if you're a Miami native, you know Columbus, like one of the tenets of Columbus, I don't want to like, uh, butcher the the phrasing, but the Marsland Champagne tenant is to kind of like bring me the the guys that no one else really wants. Oh yeah, and we'll shape them up. Correct. I feel like that's the secret sauce, and uh, and, I think that- and I owe a lot. I owe a lot to that school and to the people who who taught me there because as I go into this world of like art and entertainment and talking to you know different companies and corporations, all that stuff. The the interpersonal skills I got from some of the legends that t- taught and still teach there, to this day, still win out in every psychological relationship I'm involved in. I think that um, I love how you said you know like we'll take ever we'll take yeah. the, all the people that you don't want. Yeah, I think that's changed a little bit now. Uh-huh. I, I don't really know because I, I remember we had. I mean, I don't want to say the teacher. I love him to death. He's such a great guy. But I remember we used to just give him such. A hard time. Yeah. And then I remember like five years later, I went back to visit that teacher and all yeah. the kids were sitting there like yeah. like actual students and looking like they, they actually were involved. It depends on the year. Like, so there's a cycle. Like I was teaching there for four years up t- until this past February. And so, for example, you could have a freshman class that's a, uh, uh, a really great group of kids, but the sophomores are lunatics and the yeah. juniors are pretty chill, but the seniors are madmen. And it's like a whole – it's like a – an organism in of itself. So yeah. it depends on that. Like there are still some wild, wild kids there that we call throwbacks. Great. You I know? love that. But it's it's a good thing. And I don't shy, think we should shy away from that because I think those are the Patrick Henrys of our culture. Like, you know, the give me liberty or give me death guys. And they're good people. They have good hearts. And, and now they're going to be guided by the best in Miami. Enter I, I, I just Nick don't, I don't want Peter to be left out. There is a... a a thing that's happening at the table. Mm. Uh, Peter has agreed to smoke his first, <clears throat> the first cigar of his. Okay, life. no, it, let's Call not back. say it's the first cigar. No, no, no. Let's okay. Everybody, Call first back. of all, everybody, calm down. It's not the Eucharist. Let's, okay, let's, let's calm back. down. Second You're of all, right. I don't even react that way. Sec, second of all, <laughs> second of all, I have smoked a cigar okay. as a child. It was a nightmare. As and a what I, what I've agreed. No, right. Well, no. What I what I've agreed to is to try to smoke a cigar again. Okay. Oh, that's on mic on camera. You understand what I'm saying? That's great. And now, what happens? I'm, I'm, you know, if I throw up, if I inhale well, no, no, all the no, way no, down. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is anything's on the table. So, this is why people are tuning in because anything can happen. I feel like this is official. This I, looks good. You look Does it look natural? Very like this is something you do daily. I have to tell you, as, as a Cuban who's grown a beard. And smoking a cigar, <laughs> I've always been weary of having both of those things at the same time. And scotch, like this is this is lot. full Cuban. This bro. is full. Wrap me in the fucking flag right now. Like, <laughs> God damn it, man! Fuck yeah, dude. I feel like Fuck you should yeah. be part of a caravan right now. Now, the secret of a cigar is you don't have to even smoke it. You just have to do this when you talk. Just yeah, just always it's very assertive. Yeah. This is and you when can kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I'm making a point. Can you now? Can you do this now for the? Am I on tape? Are we doing video? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, so look I, at this fucking thing. It's I know, right but I never. You never know. How much closer you could have fucking I, put it to your face? I'm used to a camera's on. All, so they, can you do this with it? You know what I mean? Like can you? Hey. No, you have to oh, but it's a every, slow. Every it's every a. Gesture. It's a little lean back. Hey. Uh, and do you ever rest a cigar? I, I've known no, yeah, yeah. with a cigarette. Some, I've seen people put it down. Yeah. yeah. You got to rest a cigar. You you can like you can put it down. Yeah. This is actually not a proper ashtray for. Okay, but that's what we're using. That is correct, sir. Very cool. Peter, uh, tell me. Bro. Welcome to Pancom Podcast. Oh, Again, we're going to do this for the fourth time. If it's any easier, you could just do like, you know, opposite. Oh, okay. I didn't know if that was cool. That's fine. That's fine for now. Well, thank you so much for the hospitality. I, I'm... Again, I'm always shocked when people actually want to be on this podcast. I love it, dude. It's the fourth time I've said it, and I still mean it all four times. Well, you're a craftsman in and of itself, and you're a professional, and you're an entrepreneur, Oof. and that's, to me, the, the highest accomplishment to me like to be an entrepreneur and to do it successfully and then to do it in a highly competitive uh, arena right and that yeah i think competition is a perspective okay well meaning that you're not like 
I think you are your own competition. True, you should be right. Like, yeah. You should be always like pushing yourself up. But in the, in the sense that like, and we were Nick and I were talking about this before you get you got here. Like Miami is a place that has a lot of fanfare around the culinary, you know, uh, uh. And experiments experience here. I don't know. We got so beef. Why? At least on an optical level, like yeah, it's got a lot of hype. We can get in deep about my feelings about all of that. Well, yeah. But first, let's talk about you. Tell me, bro. I want to know. My favorite subject. (laughs) Is it? Shocked. I know everything (laughs) about that. (laughs) Uh, How? Well, first of all, I um, born and raised here. Yeah. No, born in in Arlington, Virginia. Oh, yeah. But I moved with my family around two years old. So I I, essentially, yeah. Essentially, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you identify as. uh, Miami, yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Yeah. I went to school in Virginia. So I know a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, Interesting state. Yeah. Uh, mostly in the uh, Fairfax County and D.C. areas where some of my family still lives. Very different area that yeah. from where I went to Pretty school. bizarre area. Pretty bizarre. Yeah. Well, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, I went to Averitt University, so it's like the south okay. western part of the okay. state. And it's just like the perspective and people, it's all very different. It changes you, right? I feel, like this, I feel like it should be a requirement for people who are born and raised in Miami to go somewhere else for a little while. You don't realize how different we really are until we go other places. And how much the culture of Miami is entrenched in your entire makeup until oh. you leave, dude. And yeah. to me, as much as I – and I love Miami. Like the more I travel, the more I say, okay, this is where I want to live. And sometimes, like especially during this uh, pandemic, I've said, I got to get the hell out of here. People yeah. are losing their mind. But the truth is um, – you realize that for all the good, there is like a, an audaciousness and like a, a braggadociousness that comes with Miami. And sometimes it's like a defense mechanism, I think. And when you go out, especially if you leave the country and see what's going on and you get humbled a little bit, it's good to come back to Miami and have a different perspective. Because I think you, you can thrive here with that perspective. Uh-huh. I, think I never want to move from here. Right. I love it here. But I think that the four years I spent away from here was pivotal to my growth as a human being. Yeah. And I say that, you know, not just because of like, I encountered like real racism. I encountered like what it is to live in that town. That's in every other movie of like middle America. And it's struggling with its identity and they don't understand. And then, you know, I learned what it was that like, no one understands what the Cuban culture is. Uh, Cuban Americans, if you know, it's the thing. It's like, well, you know, you don't look Mexican. I'm, right. Well, we're not Mexican. Right. So they have Mexicans are Mexicans. And yeah. We're Cubans. Yeah. So what's the difference? And then you learn <clears throat> so much about your own culture just through that, like, journey, you know? So, Virginia, you came when you were two and a half? Yeah. Two, like, I barely remember living up there except for, you know, a few things. But, you know, raised in Miami, mostly Kendall. And, uh, Kendale. Yeah. Kendalians. Kendalians. That, yeah. that is That's what good. we call ourselves. I have never heard that. That should be tattooed Trade market. Something. Start a new podcast right now. Kendall Ken- exclusives. Kendalians. That's it. Yeah. Who are the biggest Kendalians out there? Shout Oof. out Alex Giannis, sick artist from Kendall. Um, but yeah, so, and then, you know, um, after, uh, during high school and college, I got into music and I, and I was in a band and my band got a record deal when I was like a freshman in college. And Ooh. so we started like traveling around and doing shit like that and and that gave me some perspective on yo where'd you go to college fiu ah the few and the proud the few and the proud bro um and so but that that was an experience that kind of taught me about like building a brand building entrepreneurial skills meeting people in a in a in the entertainment industry and what that really is and and so for a long time music was my focus and when the band you know broke up i realized that i have to be self-contained and, and self-reliant, uh, which is when I started to focus more on artwork, where I was the only eccentric personality I had to worry about. Mm. Less personalities to deal with, the right. better off you are. Creators, man. Creators are eccentric. Um, yeah. And they're also like self-sabotagers. Yep. They're insecure. Insecure. I mean, there's nothing more difficult than putting your own creative thoughts on yeah. paper, on a plate, yeah. or whatever, and then giving it to the world yep. and saying, okay, here's my, the insides of my brain yep. and the insides of my heart. And then people put it on Yelp. Yeah. I know you don't have that thing, but I, I have. Oh, but I got everything else, bro. Are you no, I know. Me? I'm sure. I'm I package, sure. I package some prints the wrong way uh, in March 
and you would think uh, people were coming with torches to my house, bro. Yeah. And uh, so, but but the what the thing in common is you're creating something, like you said, and your your whole goal is to please someone else with your hard work, essentially. I mean, and then by doing that, please yourself. Yeah. Right. Because to me, like at least the way I think is, I. What motivates me is I have a haunting fear of shame. Oh, yeah? The shame that potentially I would be somewhere with my artwork, obviously, and I would bump into the people who I respect the most in the industry, the artists that I you know, admire the most. And they would go, oh, that's your artwork? And it wouldn't be my best. And then they'd judge my artwork from that, mm. my skill, my potential from that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Even if they're like, oh, that's pretty good. Like, that's the worst. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And so I always think that one day I'm going to be sitting at a table like this with the artist that, like, made me want to w- make artwork. And I want to be able to stand proudly next to my work. Yeah. You know? And so every time I make something, I'm thinking that somehow, especially with the internet, this image is going to get in front of that person. It's not about sales. It's not about creating a brand. It's not about any of that stuff. It's That's my real motivation. That somebody I respect tremendously will see this and either, you know, kind of like, and this is all bullshit in my head, but, you know, knight me. Like, yes, you are worthy to stand among us yeah. as if you're there's some up. fucking council, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're next or up. say, no, get the fuck out. You don't want to be, you know, that kind of thing. I think the, and I can relate on several levels because like the whole creativity and Food is, and we've talked about this exhaustingly yeah. on this podcast, is like, is food art or is it a craft? And I think that there's a healthy version of both uh, in the food world. Um, you know, but for me, the the idea of putting our food out there in the world, I've I've abandoned the review thing. Like the for review me, thing. Yeah, for me the, personally, like, I don't... In the sense of a, rev- of a professional reviewer or no, like no, people I'll, giving I'll, you feedback? No, I'll read those. But okay. it's like um, – and feedback – I think feedback and reviews are different. Yeah, okay. I, if someone give me feedback like I thought this could have changed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's like a conscious yeah. feedback and I'm asking you for the feedback. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's like, you know, just so inundated with like Google reviews. Yeah, and that's a lot of information that we've never like, had before, bro. If you, if you were to sit up at night – and read all of that, it would drive you mad. Yes. And I think it would it would stray you from what your original vision and your original goal. Yeah, you might modify to like please an impossible critic that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Because like I said, your own co- your biggest competition is you yourself. Yeah. So like I'm I feel like we're always trying to further like get better, but yeah. it's better than we were yesterday. Correct. You know, like there's not like a, a bar like, okay, we need to get better than that. Yeah, correct. No, we just need to be better than we were yesterday. Correct. And we need to keep on pushing in that yeah. direction. And yeah. it's it's exhausting. Like there's uh and I think this year more than ever because there's so many other fucking elements of exhaustion this year, mentally, emotionally, inside of your soul, that then you're just trying to compete against yourself Bro. to be better. And, you know, in a lot of ways you know, I think every creative out there in some capacity is in some kind of competition. Yeah. And being a competitor, you want, I don't know what the award is, but there's, you know, there's things that you're Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, it's it's hard because there is no path. There's no road. There's no, like, you know, I used, to, I used to talk to some of my friends and say that I wish that all I wanted to do was study medicine yeah. or study law, right? And, and that's a funny thing to say because... We know how much work and how serious those careers are. But when I say that, I mean I wish that I was interested in doing something that had a clear path. Yeah. You know, and what we do does not have a clear path, especially if you want to make a name for yourself. You have to figure out how do I kick ass and stand out because those are two different things. How do you dig through political bullshit? Oh, yeah. So and so, you know, the when 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 you're talking about like what that final goal is there really isn't one you have to put things out there for yourself to achieve and then you have to keep moving the goalpost back because if i could go back to tell myself two years ago you're gonna be here i would be like holy shit i I didn't think i would ever get there and now i'm like this is not even the beginning right right yeah it's interesting you know like when i was 27 28 i was like you know my goal is to open up my own restaurant and then i did that and a lot of people like well you're so successful and when i look back on it the first year and a half was such a failure 
on my part of doing like being prepared, you know, and it's uh, it's a lot when you when you accept that. Yeah. And you learn from that yeah. and you move forward from that. Yeah. Now you're again competing against yourself. Like, right. okay, so what is the new goal? Right. We're here. We luckily survived that. So what is like what are the new things? And like you said, the what is that the 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 prize at the end of the at the end of the journey? Yeah. There there is no essential no. like prize because I think I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, Man, I wonder if I should have been a dentist. <laughs> You, you ever think dentists wonder that shit? Like, do you think dentists like, man, I should have opened a fucking restaurant? Yeah, for, there's no doubt. I think yeah. that's probably more common. Much more common. M- much more common. I rarely ever say I want to be a dentist. Right, that right, might have right. been the first right, time. Right, 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 right. I've said other things like maybe I should have just done something else. Yeah. But the creative uh, thing inside of people is both positive and negative. Yeah. Right? Because creatives, we struggle to find that creative Role. It's every day, bro. Every day, that's oh. it's it it right. It's every day. There's something like, like, like I can never sit and be like, "Hey, you did great." <laughs> you know, I never get that. Yeah, I sit on the couch, like like today, around four o'clock. I finished a fucking piece that was for a deadline that was insane. The deadline was insane. This whole month has been extra insane, and um. And when I when I sat down on the couch, today, I'm like, holy fuck, this feels so good, dude. Just to sit on the couch, bro. Like that's my new my new prize to just say, hey, you earned this shit. Because if I don't accomplish what I have to accomplish, and I sit on the couch, it's like my ass hurts. It's like yeah. my ass is on fire, dude. Yeah. And to go back to what you're saying about what um, the art and the craft and all that, I feel like it's it's a lot simpler if you break it down by what is your goal, right? And that's, you know, where we're at. So talking about where, if we, you know, if, if, and I studied, I went to school for art and I studied, I saw a whole bunch of horse shit and I listened to a whole bunch of bullshit. But at the end of the day, the one thing that I could I take away, who are you? Who's right. producing this? It's like thing. the cops coming to get ET, bro. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> but, uh, but, but at the end of the day, if it's, it turns into a thing about intention. Like if you're working really hard to develop a skill. And you're applying the skill with a certain intention in your mind. I feel like that's it. There's a, that's the art. That's the art. You're not just randomly making shit or you're not just doing shit to get a check. Like you're doing it with the intention of an end result. And that's, that's where it becomes the art of what you're doing. It's interesting you mentioned like doing something to get a check. Yeah. And I have this like uh, – I was talking to – one of my dearest friends, mentors, like two days ago. And we were talking about like um, this I, this crazy idea that Nick and I have about this project that we're trying to formulate, whatever. And his last thing was like, you know, there's a good chance you're not going to make much money out of it. Yeah. And my response was, I don't know if there's anything in my life I've done for money. Right. <laughs> like, like not and one fucking Thank thing. God, right? Yeah. Like um, the restaurants, like, yes. Yeah. They, they're, they're busy and yeah. the thing, but you know, it takes a lot of people to run a restaurant. Yeah. And then uh, the end result, it's like, sometimes people are like, oh, you guys are so busy. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't mean that like sitting on stacks of cash right. either. Right. It just because I don't do it for that. Yeah. I do it because I love what we do. And I bet that when you first started and you first opened the restaurant, as soon as you were profitable, you reinvested. Right. And cool. that. And that's what like people don't realize. And as soon as I started making decent money off just the artwork, I was so tempted to fucking be like, buy that bullshit you want or yeah. whatever the fuck it was. And I'm like, nah, dude, take the entire thing and buy my tickets to all the places I got to go this year. I'm going to New York, going to California, going to here and there. Buy advertisements in every magazine, all that shit, you know, and that – multiplied 100 percent double down because it's never been about the money for me either it's like i i cannot i i have this fear that i'm gonna be on my i think about my death day all the time like the day i'm gonna die and like those last minutes of like consciousness where you're like still good you're still lucid but you know you're like hours away i cannot stand the idea that i would regret a day in my life yeah i cannot live with that dude i i have I'm numb in a lot of ways where people are like really motivated and, and sensitive, but I'm super sensitive to that. Super sensitive to that. Like the idea that I would regret anything. I've never said no to any opportunity that I thought might be 
something interesting or exciting and going to push me forward. I'd rather fail in public, which I think is a secret to any success that I've had. Failing in public, I don't give a fuck. Let's just try shit. Then, 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 then not know. Yeah. You know? I, um, we've talked about this in the past too. <clears throat> this restaurant as it is now post world pandemic quarantine crazy 2020 is the best that it's ever been. That's amazing. From a food perspective, from a service perspective, from everything. Not just that, we hold um, two tastings every month that are like an event, and the food is very different, which they attended last month. And that wasn't the smartest thing to do financially. The tastings? Just the whole thing. Okay. Like, spend money on making it better. Got it, got it, got it. Train people, hire better staff. Got it. Do the whole thing. Make it better. Because you could be like, you know, we're just going to serve, I don't know, sandwiches yeah, get or something. By. We're going to do something easier that's in our wheelhouse. We could do it and people are still going to come or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we doubled down. And we doubled down because the name, the thing, means more to me than, like, the the money aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. And I think it's the creative competitor. Yeah. You know, like, uh, when we... When we're on the other side of this thing, I want to be better. I don't want to make it look like we lost. No. I want to make it look like we grinded even harder. And I mean, these, the people that work with me are incredible. Yeah. Because they have to deal with me every day. Yeah. And that's tough. Yeah. So to deal with the hearing every day, like we need to be better. We need to be better. We need to do this better. We need to. And then on top of that, go through everything that we've all gone through. Yeah. In the last year. And are probably going through some people. Who knows? Still going through. Very much still going through it. It's just like an exhausting, recurring, like, and this is, uh, I went to Utah just recently. And I did that because, kind of like how you said you were, like, sitting on the couch. Yeah. Fuck, that feels so good. Yeah. I was sitting in a stream. Yeah. Standing in a stream. Fly fishing. Nice. And I was like, this feels so good. I'm a terrible fly fisherman. I'm a terrible fisherman, period. Doesn't matter what body of water I'm in. (laughs) It was, uh, but it was still a feeling like we haven't won the, like the entire war, but I think, I think we conquered this battle. Yeah. 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 I think we conquered this battle. I think I have an incredible staff. Yeah. I think our food is very good. I think our service is very good. And I was like, creatively, sometimes you need to like push yourself out of a certain thing to get creative again. Dude, it's, it's kind of like an, a, an amazing thing that, and we were talking, Nick and I were talking about this before you got here. The idea that this has been a destabilizing event. I try to look at, dude, because it's fucking hard to make it in art, dude. The same shit, you know. Like all I've ever cared about in my life is art and music. The two things that everybody told you you're not gonna make it, and you're gonna eat a plate of shit your whole life trying to make it. And I'm like, well, that's what I like. So fuck them, fuck them. And yeah. and I have and I and I have this like desire to you know to succeed to a level where and this is really unhealthy psychologically but i i, I say it out loud all God, the time I love this yeah this is so good well this is real yeah and i say this out loud all the time because i want to make sure maybe i can exercise it but i have this desire to succeed to a point where i'm comfortable and secure enough and i want to go on a reverse apology tour you know what that is no but please so you know what an apology tour is apology okay. tour like you fucked up you go around say yeah. hey i fucked up i fucked up i want to do a reverse apology tour I want to go to my fourth grade teacher. I want to go to my assistant principals from elementary, oh, some great. family members I've had, friends, and I want to say, reverse apology tour. You owe me a fucking apology, bitch. This you try good. to hold my shit down, dude. Like, I could have used a little push in fourth grade when I was a fat fuck sitting there, you know, not knowing what to do with my life, and you told me, you know, you're going to eat shit because you're a fucking weird ass. <laughs> and, you know that's what I'm saying? So good, yeah. I really feel that, and I know that's unhealthy, and I'm working on it. Not you know? unhealthy. I mean, it's unhealthy. I don't care what anyone sense. says. Well, look, it's unhealthy in the sense that I don't want to really hold on to that kind of shit. But I really think that, and I and I and I gotta tell you, like, I I as a teacher now, you know, I taught for 13 years public schools, and then at Columbus. Bless you. That is yeah, a man. Tough thing to do. It's rough. And so one thing, you know, at teaching art, you t- you see kids who are fucking badasses, bro. Like better than I was ever gonna be at that age by a long shot. And we just culturally shit on that you know and so those kids say fuck i guess you know everybody who i respect and look up to is telling me that i'm fucking up right now i need to go and and change and dude if you just zoom out and fast forward that kid's life all the way to he's 50 years old 
maybe that kid's fucking miserable as an adult. And I don't even want to say maybe because I've had parents of kids who were badass artists. So- sophomore year, they come up to me and they'll say, listen, my kid's really good at art. I get it, yada, yada, yada. But let's not uh, fill his head up with too many ideas because we really want him to be this or have this. What a dentist, right? Sure. Poor, you know. It's <laughs> tough to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout all out. credit to all right, dentists. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, it's hard life. Um, and then two years later, the kid wins a bunch of awards. He's got a sense of what he could do with his life professionally because I filled his head with career tracks instead of, you know, horse shit. And, I, and, and the idea is like, yes, you can make it. It's hard as fuck. But you can actually make it. A bunch of fucking people make it, bro. If you don't believe me, watch the end of Avengers Endgame and see how long that credits reel goes, bro. Yeah. That's just a lot longer than other, you know, uh, positions in your area. There's a lot of people there, right? And uh, and those movies make some decent money, I heard. And so the idea is that <laughs> if you start, like, programming that and the kid gets serious, then junior year, the, the kid's dad comes up to me and goes, listen, uh, you know, I, I, I want to say thank you. And, you know, the truth is, you know... Uh, I wish that I had fought, and this this person, and I don't want to. I'm thinking of a person in particular, but it was on many people. And this person, you know, was you know in the in the in the in the field of uh, le- very highly positioned person in the legal field here in Miami. All right, and and uh, <laughs> telling an influential <laughs> person, and then and they'll say, um, you know, I really wanted to be a photographer when I was in high school, and I just didn't, and now now he, you know. Or I wanted to be a painter. And so the idea is like, like – and like I started like tearing up talking to me about this shit. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. Can I tell you? No one knows what the fuck they're doing. Everybody's just out there talking shit. Everybody's just scared as fuck. And, or, and they're guiding their kids by fear, not by like, yo, we're going to die one day, all of us, 100% guaranteed. We're going to die. And so until then, have a good time, bro, and just try to be a good person work your fucking ass off and be happy every day. How about that for an idea? I got to tell you um, the fact that you were an educator Mm. and you were talking to kids that way. I admire that. And the reason why the, the tat, the logo, the tattoo, the thing was all because somebody told me I wouldn't do this dream. I had only when pigs Pigs fly. fly. Yeah. And it stuck. That was in eighth grade. That was before Columbus. What school? Uh, Sunset prep. Okay. Yeah. God, she's the worst. Yeah. You and can picture the moment, right? I still remember it. Oh, I dude, remember those it like it was yesterday. Me, I don't know of a compliment that resonates that much, but that no, shit. No, compliments are bullshit. I, I, I think do. they're all fake. But the this this thing, I remember it being just like yesterday, and it's still, every time I think about giving up, I remember you will only succeed when pigs fly. Fuck that. Dude. And I was just like, fuck this. I'm going to keep on going. Yeah. And that's why I'm a little crazy yeah. about some things, but yeah. it's fine. Um, it's just like to hear. And, you know, there was other teachers in Columbus that were the opposite. Right. right? Like uh, Mr. Linforce. Hell yeah. Uh, Shout out Linforce. I know. His book is actually up on the. Amazing guy, dude. Yeah. That guy's an ama- th- those, those are the people that the same thing that you're saying. K through eight, I was miserable. I got to Columbus and I felt anything was possible all of a sudden. 100%. Because all of the teachers there that are the special sauce and they know who they are, you know. Yeah. You and can say it. Yeah, Linsky, yeah. Linsky, well, you're there's one Linsky, of them. Linsky, there's Linforce, Eisenberg, Scholler. Oh, yeah. And there's so many more. I could even – Dean who beat my ass. Man, I – Yeah. Anytime someone says Mr. Dean, Bro. I automatically get emotional. He's the man, dude. I remember I walked in – Mr. Dean, yeah. He, I had him for class. Yeah. But then I remember – I think it was my – it was my freshman year. I didn't have him for class till later. Okay. My freshman year, he was subbing for somebody, and uh, he knew that I was on the football team. And I walk in, and I said, "What's up, coach?" And I start walking to my seat, and it was in the first row. And all of a sudden, I hear like thumping behind me, <laughs> and this old man just comes running full steam at me and form tackles me straight into the fucking floor. Oh, and he was just—he gets up, and he's like, "Whoo!" He just walks away, and Dude, I'm like. <laughs> That was amazing. Who are you? Like, yeah. I was a freshman, so I had no idea who Mr. Dean was. And then we just became, like, super tight. It's amazing. I remember dude. in the middle class, I mean, Dean, when I was in Columbus, I don't know how old he was. He was already well, much older. Well, when you were a freshman, that was the year I got my ass whooped by him, and deservedly so. And <laughs> I consider it a life-changing event, frankly. And he was already – I always tell people, like, imagine if Skeletor was human. <laughs> right? right? That's Dean, bro. He like, would – in the middle of class, he would just stop, 
and he would like whistle and he would say time out and he would go to the back and remember we had those ACs in the back that didn't work yep and he would jump up there this guy's old and just start doing pull ups that's a he man he just start fucking dude. doing pull ups and just get down go back to the front and keep on teaching and I was like god this guy's amazing dude I don't know about you but like at that age you know my dad and my mom split when I was young uh, they split up when I was young and I didn't have like and, and my stepdad was great don't get me wrong but it wasn't the same role. And to see a guy like that that was like full savage man, bro. Yeah, yeah. I needed to see that shit, dude. Yeah. And I needed to see it kind of like at that crazy level just to like, I'm like, oh my god, this guy gets a paycheck to be a psycho. But he's also brilliant. And he's also actually helping me a lot. My English and my SATs went up and all that. And then one, you know, and he was always friendly. He never held a grudge. That was my favorite thing about him. He could fuck your ass up on Monday and Tuesday were cool. Yeah. And and yeah. and what happened – and my story, I've told it many times, but I love that guy so much. I I'm, I wish I could have said thank you to him before he passed. But he he used to give us this SAT prep uh, week, and he would pass out these little pencils, you know, the little shitty pencils yeah. and the scantrons. And I was sitting in the back, and right in front of me was this, like, wannabe thug kid um, named Mauricio. And like the kid was super wannabe thug, bro. But he was well, not a bad guy, but he was a little bit of a dick. And he had a reputation. I was not known for being a dick. I was just a fucker, you know, like a little fucker. And so I sat in the back seat, and Dean would pass out the pencils. And since we're taking our, our, our SATs, he sits at his desk, leans back, uh, pulls up a newspaper because this is 2000, the year 2000, opens a newspaper, looks down. We're all doing our shit. Okay. Now I starts reading the paper. And so I, for a whole week, every day, I would take one of those pencils. I would take two from the box, one to use and one to chuck right over the paper, hit him in the fucking head. Four days I hit him. And it on actually f- hit him? Hit him on the square in the fuck fucking pissed as fuck. Everybody blamed Mauricio. <laughs> and they knew it was me, but everybody got my back. And they go, bro, Mauricio, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Chill, bro. It's Dean. And he'd be like, get the fuck out of here. And that kid, Mauricio, sir, it wasn't me, bro. Get the fuck out of here. And he thought it was Mauricio because Mauricio's a dick. On the fifth day, bro, on the fifth day, I was this little jolly, fat, pasty kid, bro. I'm like, <laughs> and I got my pencil. I'm like, here we go for the fifth. And everybody's like looking like, here we go, fifth day. I get it. As soon as I throw it, bro, as soon as it leaves my hand, it's like right here. He turns the page and the page goes down. So he sees and he sees my fat fucking ham hand like this. And he goes, Santa Maria, bro. I go, no, trying to get my pencil back. <laughs> he starts fucking throwing kids. God, God. God, to get to me, I just remember him. And the funny thing is I remember the story so exaggerated and I've had it confirmed back to me by people who were there without me telling them the story. He picks me up out of my desk. My desk is still wrapped around me because I was so fat back then. It stuck to me. He lifts me up and he slammed me against the fucking back wall. This was uh, C-15, I think, was the room. Slams me against the wall. Boom! He goes, you fat piece of shit. You're never going to throw a pencil again. You understand me? Like that. I go, yes, sir. Yes, I'm so sorry, sir. It's like, look, get the fuck back in your seat. Oh, you're wearing it. Boom. He sits down. <laughs> and, bro, dude, I swear that was to be, you know, to cite Catholicism. That was my Paul Saul moment, bro. I sat down like, holy shit, I'm not the man that I think I am, bro. Yeah. I mean, those. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Oh, boy. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> those teachers there. Mirabal, you remember Mirabal? Oh, yeah, I do. I love that guy. Uh Mirabal was coaching my first two years, and then he left. Remember, uh, you were already gone by that time. But he left the Braddock. Yeah. And I always tell, even now, I'll tell Mirabal, like, the, the way that he coached and the way that he was impacted me so much in my life. Look at him Tra- now. Trujillo. Trujillo's the man, dude. Trujillo I've known since I was a kid because he went to Columbus when my sister was in Lourdes. Oh, shit. So they, you know, friends and whatever, and I was a little shit, and I was always like, yeah, I'm going to go to Columbus, and I'm going to play football, and a little fat fuck that was so unathletic, like, it was crazy. I ended up going to Columbus and playing yeah. football, but it was just like, it's those culture, good bro. ones yeah. make such an impact on your life, and I'm not a teacher, yeah, but I consider myself a coach to these kids in my You're kitchen. a community leader, bro, that's what it comes down to. That's a strong word. No, um, it really is. But I don't, community it. leader is strong. Okay, in your community that you've built, you lead them. I'm a coach to my kids. Okay. That's how Fair I Fair enough. I just I'm a coach to my Got kids it. and I think that um I think I've learned a lot from them as like yeah. hopefully they've learned from me and just like the evolution and I yeah. hope that those things like from Lynn Force, Trujillo, yeah. Mirabal, whatever that like I can instill into them. Hell yeah. You know? 
Those are the good ones. Those good teachers yeah, that yeah, make yeah. like a fucking difference. But that eighth grade fucker, bro. Oh man, she's a principal now. Yeah, yeah. I follow. Good. I send her all of our memorabilia. I've tried to find them. She no, I don't need to try. I know. <laughs> I send her like the new shirts. She does. She still doesn't know what I this love is about. It. Yeah, it's good. Um, we we should. I don't know. Maybe talk about his art. I'm about. Can no, I? No, I was gonna say. Me? I was hoping Nick that you were gonna say we should have her on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that actually. She's been brought up enough times that oh. we probably should. <laughs> no, we should. Um, now, thanks, Nick, for interrupting me. I Killer segue. Can, I know. Just you fucked it all up. It was all very organic and real. That's his new nickname, and then you bro. Had to, like do the producer thing. Like <laughs> it's been forty-five Killer minutes. Segue, forty-five bro. minutes. We've been talking good. about Columbus <laughs> for half an hour. Well, this yeah. is uh, this is funny because this is one of the things that I don't talk about on other like interviews and talks because it doesn't relate. Like it doesn't res- resonate. Everyone wants work. to know about your art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you're a great this artist. Is a, this we is an exclusive Why conversation. Why are you a great artist? Ex- because of your teachers. One hundred percent, bro. See, only a Columbus student. Shut figures- up! I know what I'm doing here. It, Fuck. It's a blend guy, dude. It's my. I know. It's different. It's men for others. Hey, just trying to be a man oh. for others here. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Anyways. For, for the greater glory of Pancom Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's my name on the sandwich, damn it. My name. I'll do whatever I want with I it. I love it. Um, so tell me about your art. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really. No. When, when did it become like a... I think there's always like a turning point in yeah. every creative person yeah. is that they're like... I have all these thoughts. Yeah. I want to make it yeah. a, a real thing. I want to, and not only do I want to make it a real thing by myself. Yeah, I want to now. I want to try to do the thing, dude. You know what's funny is, um, I started teaching art because I thought I had no chance of making it as an artist. And I said, like, well, at least I'll be around kids that are into it, and I'll get to do art all day, and it'll be chill and all that. But in 2011, around there. I started doing gallery shows in Miami, you know, Design District and Wynwood and all that shit. And I started to realize how nobody understands the fucking business of art in that world. And I'm happy to say that on on microphone now from the comfort of a position that has a salary and benefits. But I sold out a gallery show, you know, run by a really great fucking – person in the art world down here who's a really kind person i don't want to say anything bad about that guy um but in my mind i'm like great i sold out an art show first solo show let's do another one bro let's plan it six months out all right let's make some more money let's keep expanding the thing blah 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 we'll see that was the response i got what the fuck we'll see right what is we'll see what is we'll see what am i gonna do with we'll see fucking pay the bills with we'll see and so i'm like no fucking way so you know, I'm like thinking, what do I have to do? I, I sold the whole show out. I made this guy half the money that I made, you know, like that's how it works. You get like a cut of the, you know. And uh, so I said, wow, I guess I have no control over my, my career if I do it this way. So I, I, you know, one day I went to the Supercon, Florida Supercon, right? I'm like, fuck, I should just set up here, bro. You know, I, I, I'm in control. I buy a table for the weekend, it's 200 bucks. I set up my artwork, sell some shit, you know, talk to people. Whatever. And I did it. It was pretty successful, you know? Cool. And But I didn't know what I was doing, and then I just said, okay, I'll do it again next year. That was my big plan. Do it again next year. And I spent the whole year making more work t- for that show. And I'm like, that w- went really well, twice as good as last time. Maybe I should do one in Orlando. Maybe I should do one in Tampa. And so I started doing more and more shows until about 2018, I got the balls to take the shows to California. boy. Yeah. And, uh, the encouragement came not from a lot of people. You know, most people Oh shit. I know. found us. It reminds me of my car at Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> the fireworks. <laughs> it's always a good day for fireworks, bro. And uh, so the, you know, uh, to, to go back to what we were saying about when pigs fly, I told a bunch of people, hey, I'm thinking about doing a show in California. I'm thinking about, what do you guys think? You guys have done shows out there. Eh, your shit's not really what they're looking for out there. You might, you know... You know, maybe not a good idea. Oh, man, it's the best. Bro. And I, people, love, I love how many people will tell you that you can't do it. It's incredible, dude. It's like a fucking plague. And it's like people who I respect who are pretty successful, you yeah. know. And I usually think once someone's successful, they cut the bullshit out because they're like, okay, I'm good. I'm not worried about – I'm not threatened anymore. But it doesn't always be the case, dude. And so I'm like, fuck, maybe I shouldn't do it. And then one friend I have – I always want to drop his name. Great artist Brian Ewing out of uh, Ohio uh, says, no, fucking do it, bro. Not only that, like, let me send you the link so you can sign up. And I'm like, oh, okay, but I don't know how I'm going to get my shit out there. It's like, 
don't worry, just sign up. And I go, okay. Thinking that I would never get picked because it's like a curated show. Oh, yeah? I got fucking picked with a month to figure my shit out. I got everything on a plane, flew out there, changed everything, bro. Changed the fucking game. And that's where I started meeting uh, reps from a, uh, the company, a big company called Sideshow. They make all these, like, prop replicas and great, like, collectibles. Like, if you want, like, a life-size bust of Batman that looks like a real person, you go to them. If you want, like, Ooh. that kind of shit, like, eight 24-inch statues of the Mandalorian. Like, shit like that, you go to, they're the ones who have the licenses with marvel and lucas and dc and all that and then i got picked up by a couple other companies shout out brian flynn from super seven they put my stuff out so these big companies started putting my stuff out and now i was working with licenses so instead of doing like bootleg stuff that i was getting a cease and desist every once in a while (laughs) i got hired by the same company who sent me a cease and desist before and they go okay masters of the universe mattel is down with your artwork that's cool uh fucking um uh, Spider Man, Marvel's down with your shit now, so you got two licensed projects under under your belt from one trip. Not to mention the money I made selling my art out there and the connections. And then after that, off to the races, bro. I did California, New York, California, New York until like, and then, and it wasn't even one year. It was one year to the day. The same show in Anaheim in 2018. I came back in 2019. I get on the radar of. Um, the company I work for now, Skybound, which was founded by uh, a couple of people, including Robert Kirkman, who created The Walking Dead. Love and that uh, show. and so oh. they found my stuff there and they loved my work and they go, Yo, you wanna get paid to be you? And I'm like, Fuck yeah, I do, dude. And that was it. And now like I literally it's like a record label finding a band at a club. That's exactly what it was like. You know, we see what you're doing, we see all the traction you're getting, we see all the clients you have. Let us handle all of the bullshit so you just have to make artwork. And I'm like, is this real? Because i never heard of this shit before. I've heard of it like as a, in a band, but i never heard of it in art. And it's a brand new deal. It doesn't exist. And so I kind of like flipped it. Uh, I, I put it on the radar of a couple of my uh, artist friends. Uh, shout out Shag. He's like a really world famous artist who's got his own brand that he's built. I'm like, yo, what do you think about this? He's like, fucking do it, dude. This shit's hard. And uh, so now I essentially work with – I have a team. Amazing. Dude, it's incredible. You have a team. I have a team, bro. I have a team of amazing people who work their asses off all hours of the day to make sure all the emails get sent to the right people, all the contracts are negotiated for the right amount, oh. all this, the calendar is built out isn't that, perfect. Isn't that bro, feel good? It's, it's too crazy. It's like I wake up every day. I'm like, this can't be fucking real. Yeah. I wake up every day and I'm like, who should I apologize to because I'm sure I fucked something up. Right. I'm still not used to it, and I'm glad. I don't want to get used to it. But it's a deal that I think will that, – that I feel like the responsibility to make the most out of it I could possibly make, not just so I could continue living this way and, and doing my artwork uh, in this care – not carefree, but like in this comfortable environment so that other companies go, yo, this is a good fucking deal. Let's hire an artist full time. Put them on the like a company employee, and let him just do his shit. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's the future because as a creative, and you can attest to this, when you're in that gestation phase, in that trial and error phase, yeah, it gets creepy sometimes, bro. Yeah, when you're in the red and you're not like getting it together, like you said, that first year and a half. Oh man, you know what I mean? Like we all had that. I had that shit for like eight years. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm doing better every year, but where does this go? I don't even know. Yeah, that first year and a half always. It's always in the back of all my decisions. Bro. I always think about it. Well, you know, I double down all the time. Like the way I do business I is double down. Yep. All right. You know, things are tough. Double down. Be better. Yep. How are we going to be better? Yep. Do this this way. Yep. But in the back of my head, I'm always like, remember that shit. Remember what that felt like. These, um, the new era of the company, they're always like, oh, it was slow. And then I look at the numbers and I'm like, <laughs> I was here when we were doing 150 bucks a day, 200 bucks a day. You know, like I was working a line by myself. What was the first restaurant you opened? Owned or opened owned? This one, Ariete. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've opened several for other yeah. people, but but as, yours, like that first year and a half you talk about, was here at Ariete. This one, and it was like five years ago, more or less. Five years. Five. Yeah, we turned five January 14th. Bro, how many restaurants last five years, dude? No, no, not many. <laughs> well, the failure rate in the first year is 85. percent Insane. 
85 percent and then i watch a lot of kitchen nightmares so i have oh, some frame of reference for failure just hang out here you'll yeah? see kitchen nightmares all the time but don't you think that's like a are you like in in that sense like i'm obsessed with people's failure stories i got to interview on my show uh brian volk weiss and if you don't know who that is he's the guy that created the netflix show the toys that made us the toys the that movies made us. that made us right okay. after that and so he owns this company called Nacelle. They're a TV production company. Two hit shows on Netflix. And then now and, and now he's doing a show with The Rock for Disney called uh, Behind the Ride or something like that. And I, I talked to him like, bro, I'm, I think you're, it's fascinating that you made two fucking shows that are like super niche. But then when you watch them, they're like super obvious. How did nobody make this shit? Right. And then I read about him and he was a comedy pro- uh, special producer for years. Mm. Like any comedian you can think of. Any comedian you can think of, he probably produced their special. Hmm. And I'm like, this guy's fucking fa- brilliant, fascinating because he, like, figured it out, bro. And it, comedy wasn't even his thing. He wasn't a comedian. He wasn't into it. He just found an opportunity. He was like, I'm going to do this shit. It's working. And now that he's got legs, he does his own thing. You know right. what I mean? And I was talking to him. The reason I bring him up is because I say – I told him, like, dude, I have a fear of shame. Like I told you, like, a fear of failure. I can't – I can't fail. I won't allow it. Like, if I fail, it's like, it's not really failing. It's like when you have this much life left on Street Fighter and you pull out that fucking Hadouken at the end. <laughs> like, I'm only going to get right there, bro. I'm only going to get right there, dude. I'm never going to get killed. And and he's like, he told me, he's like, I am obsessed with failure stories. Like, big failure stories. And I feel like the same way. Like, I want to know all the peoples who've made it. Like all the failure story, that to me is the most valuable. Yeah. Because you're still here. Yeah. How did you do it? How did you get through that part where 99 or 85 percent of the people, like you said, I'm out, I'm tap out. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> that's the fucking I, human story, bro. Well, I think it's it's interesting because the real discovery of yourself is through failure. Yeah. When you really discover about, I mean, how many times do you sit down to do a piece? Yeah. And it's not what you wanted, not what yeah, you wanted, not bro. what you wanted, huh. and then kind of what I want, but yeah. not what I want, and then you know. So or how so about when you think it's awesome and nobody gives a shit, or when you think it's shit cares. and everybody loves it? No, yeah. Oh, <sighs> what's up with that, dude? Truffle just fries. Get out of your own way. I love yeah. that shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like one of those things that it's um, through failure yeah. you find what your real yeah. fiber is. And that's 100%. why I tell people all the time, it's like, it's okay to fail. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm never going to get mad at someone no. for failing. I'll always get mad at them for not trying. Right, 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 right. right. When you don't try yeah. or you don't put in effort, then that's more than a failure. Yeah. Like, it's disappointing. Yeah. Fortune favors a bull, man. Yeah. I feel like the first two years here, the failures that I learned from around me and of myself – or why we're, you know, we made it through the most difficult year in my industry, in so many other industries, to date. I mean, it's like... You probably you probably watched a lot of people that, you know, shudder that you would never think would. Well... Or no, you think everybody's kind of like weathered. You know, it's interesting you mentioned like, a lot of people don't understand the economics of art. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand the economics 100% of food. 100% true. I, the, the economics of food and the economics of restaurants, it's mathematics at the end of the day. And you really have to – I'm fortunate and blessed that I have uh, two amazing business partners amazing. that not only are – have they helped guide and taught me so much about that side of the world. They have supported me on my side of the world. So talking about doubling down and being creative and so on and so forth, they're just like – Amazing. Do your thing. Do whatever it is. We support you 150%. We'll ask you questions along the way, and we want to understand it better. And the same thing is vice versa. Amazing. I want to understand more about what it's like to build a healthy business from the foundation up. Yeah. And not only do I want to build this business from the foundation up, I want to build the entirety of the business. Yeah. Because now it's a company. Yeah. It's not just this. No. We have, you know. Chugs is you. Well, we have three restaurants growing into one? five. We have Chugs, Nave, Ariette. Okay. We have two more opening next year. Nice. And we have two bars currently. Which bars do you guys have? Taurus is ours. Oh, no shit. Yeah, and Scapegoat is also ours. When did you guys get Taurus? Oh, I man. got shit-faced at Taurus when I was, like, fucking too young to drink. Everybody. 
We purchased it. Uh, Super exotic place. N- not <laughs> when I was nineteen. That shit was wild. But I thought I was in a fucking Tarantino movie. Dude. No one like, has ever called Taurus exotic. When that I was is 19, the first time bro, ever. And when I, I was it. nineteen, I, can't, I somehow I snuck into Taurus somehow. There's some hot ass chicks like making out in some corner. And like, whoa, where am I, bro? And I'm like smashed. I got some friends there. I'm like, what are we you doing? You sure it's the same Taurus? This place right here, bro. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's, it's the same exotic. That's okay. I don't know. Oh, I like it. I, maybe I led a sheltered life. <laughs> I just. Anyways, they they purchased Taurus about eight years ago, awesome. and then I became a partner three oh, years ago. Oh, very cool. And uh, then we opened the scapegoat that's on the beach. It's a small nice. bar, very tiny, but super cool spot. And then we have more plans for the next year. Kendall? We're opening up. No, no, no plans wow, for Kendall yet. Bro. No plans Kendalians for Kendallians get Ken, shafted again. Kendallians are going to have to deal with the people out there in Kendall for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we have plans to open up um, a record store slash ice cream oh. shop. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, is that exclusive? Are you dropping that here for the first time? I think that's the first time we've actually talked about that, right? Fucking honored. Uh, maybe in those specific terms. Well, yeah, it's come up in maybe vaguer terms. Now you say record store. You talking about vinyl? Yo, oh, come on. Wow. There's only, yeah. For me, there's only Excellent. one kind. It's going to be called Scoop Records. Scoop? Nice. Yeah. Um, my incredibly talented um, pastry chef, Devin Braddock, is going to be heading that. We're going to be doing super seasonal. Where's that going to be? It's going to be right behind Chuck's. Nice. Yeah. So. It's exciting. It's big news. It'll be, yeah. Breaking news. Breaking. Wait till Burger Beast gets a hold of this shit, bro. Oh, man. Burger Beast loves Devin's desserts, so that's good. <laughs> um, we're also opening up a vinyl bar. We're opening up a French brasserie. Fuck yeah. The next two years are going to be very well, busy. Also, I was excited to do the show, and but really to meet you because I'm fascinated and a fan automatically of anybody who's trying to make this place better. And by this place, I mean Miami. Because, you know, you all – I remember okay. being like uh, – what year was it? 2002. So I was I was 19. Big year, apparently. And uh, I was at Comic-Con in San Diego, and I met uh, an editor from a big comic book company who told me, dude, you can't live in Miami and make it. You just got to get out of there. You can't be there. How fucking annoying is that? Bro, and I, and I really considered it because this was like pre-good internet days, you know? And I'm like, wow, maybe he's right. And I'm like, how do you know? How so did you good, know? Dude. It's so good. How so did you good, know? Dude. The one and only. Incredible, I'm dude. weirded out. How did she know? With fresh ink, by the way. I know. Yes. Emma the angel over Emma here. Emma the ink angel. It's amazing. Thank you so much. God, the service, you know? the service is outrageous. I heard Thank the you very service much. here is pretty good. Pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty. But, you know, the point is, like, like when I met Falco, you know. Oh, Falco. I love Falco to Bless death, up, dude. Hippo. Bless up, Hippo. <laughs> I if you're a hippopotamus, you exist to just like fuck and have more hippos. Like, God that's bless you, that hippopotamus right? I know, life, right? They fuck people fuck. Up too. Hippos don't fuck around. Bless, so, exactly. But Jeez. bless up, hippo. <laughs> bless up. I really love that guy to death because I feel like what he's done with Lincoln's and with Strange Beast and now with his next project, I feel like that guy has put. He kind of like laid it down, like yo, this is where you want to be. You know what I mean? And, he, and, and by the way, setting up in, in areas that no one give a fuck I know, about. That I, get, like, I want to remind is, people that Lincoln's, like be, Lincoln's, real. bro, Lincoln's is in the dark anus of fucking Westchester that nobody give a Listen, fuck about. Listen, it's next to an IHOP, though. That's bro, pretty good. Behind That's good, an that's an that's good positioning. You're behind an IHOP. And Cinco Jotas. Cinco Jotas. How dare you? Delicia de Pana. Delicia de Pana. That's right. But, I'll tell so, you. But, that, but you know what I'm saying? Like those, pe- those people to me are fucking amazing because they increase the value of my day-to-day life in a big way. And because the more Falcos there are, the more mics there are, the better our community is going to be. And I, I want to figure out like, yeah, I'm successful now and people know me in different areas. But I got to make sure I figure out a way that I can add value back to Miami. Oh. I'm very grateful for this place. And I want to be counted – again, counted among the people who are – Figuring their shit out and making this place better. I, I wonder what are are you acquainted with Captain Cush? Oh, I know of Captain Cush. I've, I've enjoyed in light of his, the superhero. Yeah, well, no connection. one really knows who Captain Cush. Well, is. I've enjoyed the product. Have you? Yes, and uh, I've enjoyed the marketing quite a bit. 
Oh, you might, you might be thinking of a man who's often confused for Captain. Oh uh, well, yeah, I, I saw the Matt Kusher. That's not. I know Captain what that Kush. sticker is. Yeah, uh, and I know what it refers. Yeah, to. Yeah, really sometimes people who think is. this yeah. is. Sometimes people think this is Matt Kusher. I don't know who the person is. He definitely, I've seen him around the way hanging out with the Hylia Spider Man, but no one really oh, knows shit. who Captain Kush is. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know. I would love to see uh, some attack Peter Hylia Spider Man apparel. Oh man, are I, you familiar I, with Hylia, Hylia Spider Man? No, I don't know that. What? Hylia Spider Man. You know when I was uh, when I was in my band called Twice the Sun, we had good friends in a band called Wasted Circle, and they were the heroes of Hialeah. So Hi- you know Hialeah Spider Man has a special Spidey mobile that is a, no uh, a modified Cutlass Supreme, <laughs> and he goes around Hialeah. He is a Peruvian American man dressed in a spider suit who goes around Hialeah, uh, fuck yeah, alerting the police to tr- uh, parking infractions no and shit. also. And also selling shoes out of the trunk of the car. This is incredible. Does, does he have his own Instagram? <laughs> it's a shame that he doesn't. We need to start one, you guys. Listen. Start it before the podcast ends, please. What you said earlier. Yeah. I take a lot of pride in the fact that we're doing the food that we're doing in Miami. Yeah. A lot of people told me that Miami would not understand a lot of people told me that to do this kind of food and be successful, you had to go somewhere else. Hmm. A lot of people told me to do, to fulfill my dreams and to do the things that I wanted to do, that I would have to go elsewhere. And people you respect? Yeah. Now, have you ever reflected on that? Yeah, with them. Why do you think that is? Because when you compare Miami to other cities like a Chicago, a New York, and L.A., They've been doing what they've been doing with food for a lot longer than we have. But there was once upon a time a person or a group of people that started, said, bro, that said, we're going to do this shit. We're going to do it here and we're going to make it stick. I just, yeah, I don't understand. And what did you consider at one point? Maybe uh, before back you in, started off, like back in 2000, probably 10 or 11, I considered moving. Same. Um, but I stayed, and I Did stayed. Did you have a reason that you stayed? Yeah, I had a girlfriend at the time. Say, dude, wow, same yeah. reason. I had a girlfriend Isn't at the crazy? time. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, would you have moved otherwise? Yeah, I mean, Me too, I, I, had, I, had, um, I had an opportunity to go to New York, and I had an opportunity to go to Charleston. I had an interview to work on Robot Chicken. Oh. You know that show? Yeah. And, and I went to Comic-Con. I showed some of the stuff. I was doing, like, these stop-motion type little puppets and shit. And I showed them to the people who worked on it. And they go, bro, come out. We'll fucking hire you to build shit. I'm like, okay. And Ooh. I didn't go because I was like, I didn't want to leave my then girlfriend. This is my one. What this the is fuck, the one. Dude? No, it's better. Yeah, yeah I'm it's glad fine. I glad it I'm glad, worked out. I'm glad I didn't either. But it's crazy. I just, and now I look at it as like such a point of pride. Yeah. That not only do people come, but people come because I wanted this to be a restaurant that the style of food and what you could have here could be like nothing else in the country. Right. And now that is actual. Yeah. And, and I feel like with, with food, you know, from the little I know about it, the idea, you know, and the same thing kind of goes with the artwork that I make. It's like there's has to be something about it that sets it apart. And the only thing you can do is, is kind of like bring your experiences and your, uh, mindset and your life to what you create, right? And so if you are creating something original and something that's you and you are of this community, it probably belongs here. You know? Let me ask you, when you create a a piece, yeah. what are some of the thought processes in that creation? Is it usually just, is it you stumbled upon it? Is it, have you already been like, in architecture in your brain i don't like, have that time anymore like the funny thing is like the way i work now i've when i was like really young i uh discovered an artist you know named scott morse and uh and another artist named andy lee at comic-con in san diego and the reason they were in, resonated with me is because they were creating incredible artwork on the spot start to finish when by you requesting it you would wow. request it you would pay for the piece and they would rec- create it and these people were like established pros. One of them was uh, – they both like did some comic work and one of them, uh, Scott Morris, was uh, working with Pixar. You oh, know, cool. So he was like – he got his own shit going on. But so you would request a thing and he would go, okay, 
And he would look at this blank surface and just go, and it was fucking incredible. And that speed and the ability to like wow me while I watched was huge for me. And I always thought I need to figure out how to get my shit so that I can like create it like that. And that's very difficult to do. And, you know, I've always tried to do that, be quick, be efficient. And it, and it benefits me now because the deadlines come like this for things. Yeah. And, uh, and so I get told like, when is this going to air? Put- oh, this? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Wow. So I can't Quick say that. That means nothing cool. Will okay, be on no, no, no. Here. So on Tuesday, a project's nothing gonna. Cool. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Just like you know, the voiceover in the. No, no, no. It's all good. Uh, oh, uh, this is the only thing I will do tomorrow. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. we'll see, uh, producer. Nick. Mike we'll has see. no idea what goes into this. Listen, I, I trust I you. On, on at least somebody. Anybody does. who talks into something that furry, <laughs> I have to, you know they're serious. He's got on a Tuesday. Furby there, on on Tuesday, I'm, I'm a Furby. A Furby. A Furby. You remember Furbies? Oh, you remember sorry. Fur- you said fur- I, I furry. Said, I thought you said furry. Yeah, it's furry. Yeah. We talked about furries earlier. Furry. So, you you know. gotta be as a Comic Con goer. You must know. I'm about very furries. aware. Yeah, we furby? talked about furries. No furries. The the people who dress up as animals. Oh. And they do a lot more. You than that. just sorry. opened my mind to what the fuck that meant like three hours and ago. And that makes that microphone that much more exciting. Yeah, I just so I'm weirded out about <laughs> that. People thing. would be very turned on. Oh my god! <laughs> this podcast is now well, taking a whole other. It's been a whole. <laughs> the reason we're gonna I, get a whole other troop of demographic. Now. Heck yeah. yeah, dude! You open it up the horizons. Uh, furries, you can support us at Patreon.com/slash/DadeMag. Yeah. I love it. But on Tuesday, like a project's gonna come out that I haven't revealed yet, and the people that I was been working on had given a very tight deadline to do a lot of work. And I didn't have the time to, you know, to go back to your question, like to gestate and think and blah, 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 blah. So it's almost like at this point, an instinct. Like I know that I can do this thing in this way. And I kind of call on all the fucking influences I've had in my life to kind of just go and just go, 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 go. And I kind of like work in that way and I refine as I go. But essentially it starts kind of like quick like that. And the idea is that I know that if I can get to a point where I'm creating something that succeeds – passes the point of approval and is successful um you know financially then i know that i'm already a step ahead of my competition because a lot of people are going to do what you said they're going to rely on that time to just date to figure it out to kind of create and uh so i just kind of rely on my influences a lot a lot and my influences growing up were you know, a lot of comic books, but a lot of like weird, gross '90s toys, like Mad Balls and G- Boglins and shit like that, mm. and uh, the artwork that, that those toys, like the Ninja Turtles and shit like that, and then like a lot of Japanese and Thai artwork. You know, I went to Japan, I went to Thailand, discovered a lot of artwork to really influence me, and so I kind of mesh those things together till it's like, uh, till it's like my go-to thing. You know what I mean? Mm. At this point, I've created a formula that works. And now I just kind of tweak that in the process. But it's important, and I wonder if it's the same with what you do, but it's important for me that if someone sees my work without my credit, without my name, that they go, that's Peter. That's Tech Peter. Yeah. That's huge for me. I I don't know if that, if that translates, but well, for no, me, I, everybody I respect the most, I can see them, the work, and go, oh, that's – is it weird that like everything for me that is modern, I try to go in the other direction? No, it's a, I think the same way because it's a, it's a supply and demand thing. It's actually like part of that entrepreneurial spirit. If everybody's going here, that's probably cool and I might enjoy what that is. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, well, there's an opening here. Right. I just – I want to go like if everyone's doing this and like that is the kind of food that everyone yeah. is like really into yeah. – I want to go over here. Yeah. And I want to go over here and then I want to see like. That's everything I do. It's just like I, I want to go not only over here. I want to go as far as fucking possible yeah. away from that as I possibly well, can. Well, bro, look. Artwork now is all about digital. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and there's some incredible shit being done. Trust me. Like it, it every day I follow on Instagram, I see these people. I'm like, how the fuck do you do that shit? And but it's digital. It's figuring things out. There's people who are like creating stuff in VR now. Like oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that. It's wild. Yeah, and like animating shit in VR so you can watch it like in VR. It's That's insane, crazy. right? And so what do I? What am I doing? I'm going. Oh, let me carve this fucking linoleum. I know, but that's, and roll ink and stamp but that the real, shit. The real, well, it like, worked because real, no one's doing it. I, the realness. Yeah. The real like the fact that you could touch Tactile, the texture yeah. and you can. You could touch it, yeah. and it's like a thing. It's the artist's hand. The, the, you want to know the hand 
of the creator is involved. You see it. You feel it. It's something inexplicable, but it does translate. I feel like so much more connected to... So, uh, my mentor had a quote, and it's something like, cooking over fire connects us to our primordial past. Amazing. Right? And um, that's why I adopted... Like, I was always known as, like, the grill guy forever. And I started working a wood grill like eight years ago and I've never left it. And just that aspect of like lighting the fire, the wood fire every day. It's like ceremonial. And it's like the, what that really means. And I don't care who the fuck. And there's, I will challenge anyone on the planet. I can cook something over wood, over however you decide to cook it, and I will win. And it's only because it's so real. Yeah. Like the flavor. Yeah. And it's like you can close your eyes and no matter what kind of culture you're from, it yeah. will connect you to something. We all come from that. It will connect you to some kind of thing from when you were a kid or whatever. It's incredible. So for me, the creative creation process, sometimes, especially now that uh, I'm not like attached to the stove every day and I'm an operator and a chef and I'm in the kitchen a few days a week and so on and so forth and I bounce back and forth. Every time I'm trying to create new menu stuff, it's always very like stale. As soon as I step back into the kitchen and I start touching products yeah, and I start touching produce and I start seeing things at the farm and I start, it just becomes, it reinvigorates, like a right? Yeah. It's like a real thing that happens because it's just natural at that point. I am not, doing the creation miami is doing the creation i am just putting it on when did you start uh when did you know that you were going to be, be a chef and be involved in food and all that it's weird because like i went to college to be a history teacher uh uh-huh. i wanted to be like linsky okay no way yeah and uh does how he bad know it's gonna hurt us i mean it 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 sounds like it's raining. Yeah. No, I mean, it's raining. It's, this is Miami, it, it, classic it, it, Miami. It could be worse. It could okay, be worse. Okay, okay. Let's just hope for the best. It sounds like it's getting worse. Oh, shit. Let's <laughs> man up and it's talk louder. That's it, bro. To the mic. Yeah. Get in that Cuban spirit, bro. Yeah, bro, we got the cigars. I'll oh, say man. it. It's got bad real fast, huh? Yeah. One eternity later. And we're back. Wow. So... There was a little bit of technical difficulty. We have discussed you, so much. All of you furries in the audience won't even notice. Let's pick up where we left off, uh, sort of, kind of. Peter, I like that. <laughs> I don't even know what touched me. Very men, re- very reassuring, this whole area. Men, right yeah. men for others. That was a very men for others <laughs> touch. Uh, <laughs> Peter. Uh, Unified, bro. L- what, Peter? Why? What we're doing here is we're bridging the gap. Why attack Peter? Let the Belang and Columbus rivalry end once and for all. No more oh, football games. Never. It's over. Let Never. them meet on the 50-yard line. Hold hands. No, no, we'll just win. And go after fucking <laughs> St. Thomas. We'll just keep winning. <laughs> yeah, so the Attack Peter name um, is a dorky name that stuck because I couldn't figure out a better name to change it to. But essentially, in like 2011 or 12, I had a website with my one of my best friends, Brian Reedy, called Attack the Planet. And it, the idea was that we were going to do like – some pop culture shit, some political shit, like anti-war stuff and like environmental awareness stuff and kind of like, you know, do some artwork that kind of brought uh, attention to that. And our emails would be attack Peter and attack Brian, both at gmail.com, of course. And um, that's where that name came from. And so att- Brian never uh, got his attack Brian email. I just kept mine out of like, fuck it, I have it already. And every time I thought about changing it, somebody told me, eh, you shouldn't change it. That name is pretty, like, catchy as sticks. And that's where it comes from. And then the side note to that was that because it was making somewhat anti-war and environmental artwork, I got a lot of people, like, shitting on me online because of it. And uh, so there was a lot of attacks towards Peter. And I thought, that was funny how that worked out. And I kept it for that reason. But, um, like I said, every time I try to change it, like, you know, like my, uh, my lovely wife, Gabby, would tell me like, hey, don't change the name. It has a good ring to it. Everything else you're coming up with is stupid. Just keep that, and that's it. That's where it comes from. It does have a good ring to it. It, it, just, it just, it is what it is. Yeah. At this point, as long as people don't think I want them to call me that, we're good. 
Listen, I my nickname. Go ahead. Is from, attack. No, Michael. No. Go ahead. Is uh, from high school is the name of one of our restaurants, which is Chug. Chug's a great name, bro. Yeah, Chug Lug was my nickname. It's a great from Mister Polito. Oh shit, Mister Polito. Fuck yeah, dude. Second day of school. Whatever happened to him? He's next week's guest. No, oh, okay. he is no? not. He's not. He's not okay. one of those teachers we talked about. Oh, yeah. Um, he gave me that nickname, and it's been like that since fuck. I was fourteen, good, thirteen, fourteen name, years old, dude. and we. Uh, when we were, you know, Chug was Chugs was essentially a pop up at the beginning. It's bizarre that it wasn't taken. Do you agree? The name? Yeah. No, it's probably been taken. I mean, like locally, even. Yeah. I I fought that. Like, let's just name it Chugs yeah. Diner. Yeah. And I was like, I don't it's know. Very good name. It's bad. Like, I just I want to get away from that. Gotcha. Blah blah cool. whatever. And then they were just like, no, you know, let's name it Chugs Diner. And I was like, it's just a pop up, so it'll only be a year. Yeah. Ended up being that now it's going to be a restaurant that's going to be around for 10 years. That's crazy. Minimum. Thank you. And what do you mean minimum? A lease is 10 years. The lease is 10 years. Yeah. Got it. And well, How many years has it been open? Uh, it was open for 16 months. We just closed a month ago to start renovations to make it an actual restaurant. Incredible. Yeah, because it was small. It Very was like good. 600 square feet. November 3rd, we start breaking down all the walls, which I'm going to take a sledgehammer to all those Very fucking exciting. walls. And... Um, it's going to become an actual restaurant with 70 seats indoors and 40 right, outdoors, well. and it's going to be a real diner. It's That's going to be what the Grove needs, yes. because everything in the Grove is now nice. What's and there's going on? Planta Queens. What's going on there? Planta, guys? Planta as a, Queens. As somebody who's been now in the Grove for a bit, what's going on? Uh, the Grove is going through this. I drive through, and I go, okay, yeah, what? Right. Where's the chili pepper? Just, just come to the end here, where Ariet... Taurus and yeah, Nave are very safe and very nostalgic. Over very there. nostalgic. Where it still looks, very, the, same. Yeah, where it still looks the same. Where where everyone knows your name. I think Chugs is going to be that, and I Scoop Records it. is going to be that as well. And we're going to try to bring back that old Grove vibe, which is just like very magical. Be about the community. Be about family. Be about like everyday human being, not only super high end shit and so to on. Me, and so the, forth. when I was a kid, the Grove was the other side of the rainbow, bro. If I could get to the Grove on the weekend somehow, so I guess I'm going to drop me off. Yeah, just drop you off on a Thursday. Drop me off in the Grove, bro. Yeah. And then my band would play a ch- Chili Pepper. Oh, man. Under- underground. Would you yeah. go to Liquid to go to the phone parties? Well, I would go to the, I would go to the uh, Improv. Was it the Improv? Oh, yeah. Improv? I think uh, the Grove's kind of like this transition it's going it's through. very fascinating, bro. I'm curious to see what happens. Who are you telling about the fascination? fascination I hear... As fuck. I, I see it on the business end of it, and I see the change of the Grove, and I see what they're starting to charge per yeah. square foot for the Grove. Yes. And all they're trying to do is what they do everywhere, which is to drive up rent yeah. and to only bring in big, big brands. Well, it's and coming so- in from both sides. I was driving into Grand Avenue, and I saw already the creep, right? It's happening over there. It's the creep Grand. from the entrance of US-1, right, coming on both sides. But the Grand – like Grand – Yeah has had a project in place for a long time to just demolish all those like apartments yeah. that are on Grand and to make this big promenade of like fucking yeah. high end. Yeah. The thing about the Grove that's still good is you can't build past five stories. Okay. So as long as we keep that intact. That giant ass Cocoa Walk though looks like more than five stories. No, no, it's no? not. It's not. It's not. It's, like three, three, it's yeah. not. It's like three or four. Okay. Yeah. Um but yeah, Coca Walk is going to be a thing. They're bringing in Salt and Straw, which they is keep, great. The With question that everybody former, has: former, former Pancom right. podcast. Shout out to Tyler. Merrill. Shout out to Salt and Straw. They're great. Right. Um, the question that everybody has right now is: Will they bring back the Yaga store? They won't. They won't bring it back. Condom USA. They won't bring back either. I'm, I'm interested music. to see if Blockbuster Music. Blockbuster. Blockbuster Music. Remember no. that shit was on the second floor next to the movie theater. Well, remember they listen to the mu- CDs. They would open the CDs before you buy it. They also had Piano Bar up there. Good point. Uh, Howl at the Moon. Pa- pian- uh, Rainforest Cafe recent. also. I don't remember that. Dan Hooters. Marino's. No, but that was Sunset. No, right here, bro. No. Dude, how many times? Hey, how, where, when was there a Dan Marino's here? Dan Marino's first was at Coco Walk on the second floor. If you're facing Coco Walk to the left, if you're at Johnny Rockets looking up, which is no rest in peace, Johnny Rockets. If you're looking up. <laughs> If you're looking up like this, 
And you look to the left, you go, oh, oh shit, Dan Marino's is right Where there. Where Cheesecake Factory was? Where Cheesecake Factory. Really? Bro. I don't remember It was that. the best fucking place. How the best you arcade. You know how much I crushed Mortal Kombat 2 in Dan Marino's, bro? Let's go, dude. Everybody. Let's Kids, go. waiters, waitresses. Oh, bro, the color cab, bro. Let's go. Jump off the fucking banister, bro. Lean over and barf on the Starbucks kids. Let's go. We've really we've really gone south here. And this is where the wind down starts. <laughs> All of our guests in Salina, Kansas are confused. <laughs> Salina, I apologize. I, let's go. Ladies, ladies I, and listen, gentlemen, we no, a, our, our, our Salina, Kansas audience is back in Salina by now. Thank uh, God. Our, no, our, I'm just kidding. Our, I'm, no, our entire Salina, Kansas audience was in Miami getting married. And with you here yes, at the Taurus. Correct. Uh, They're no, back. no, no, no. That that crowd was not getting married. Oh, that was the some of the people who went to the wedding. Anyway, so this we is do where the wind down wedding. starts. We we do a wind down. Yeah. Go ahead. So we'll start with our parting recommendations. Go ahead. Every we go around and everybody parting recommends. A th- it could be absolutely anything. Go ahead. A movie you saw. A, go ahead. A song you oh. think people should listen to. A book you read. What a, a meal you ate. Whatever. Go ahead. Uh, Mike. Do you have any parting recommendations? I do, I do. Uh, I need to look it up to make sure I get the name right. Okay, so I'm going to... Ah, go here it is. I got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Trial of the Chicago 7. Ah, oh, very good. Borat's in it. Borat is in it. I watched this. I thought it was great. Uh, I actually watched it kind of twice. Huh. I thought it was very good. I recommend that highly. What is that? Um, A Netflix so- original? It's a Netflix original, as so many things right now. It's basically um, uh, a movie about the trial that was about these seven different groups or seven people that represented different groups that were uh, opposing the Democratic National Convention in Chicago and um, just how all that unfolded. It was during the Vietnam War. And I found the acting, the production, and the writing all very good. I found it fascinating. It was something that I did not know much about and someone that I like history very much. Um, The whole thing, just Borat, his execution of that role was incredible. Um, I thought all the acting was very good, which for me to say all the acting is very good is strong. Cool. And I I would watch it probably a couple more times. In the interest of giving Peter the last word here on the recommendations, I will make one next. Oh, great. I recommend that people get on YouTube and look up information about the stoat. <laughs> what? That's not where I thought you were going. The stoat is spelled S-T-O-A-T. It is a close relative of the ferret. Huh. Uh, and the stoat is a very interesting animal. Huh. Most interesting thing I've learned about the stoat in the last 24 hours uh, that I have spent on YouTube is that the stoat has a hunting technique in which the stoat just acts crazy. It, like, starts flipping and, like, running around, and rabbits are just staring at the stoat like, what the fuck is this stoat doing? And it lulls the rabbit into a sense of, like, this stoat's just crazy until the stoat kills the rabbit. Uh, there's all kinds of other interesting stuff about the stoat, so get on YouTube and look up things about the stoat. S T O A T. I'm very sad that you did not recommend the David Hasselhoff. Um, I recommended that last episode. Oh, you're right. You're right. I did. Yeah. You're right. Kung Fury. I'll Kung recommend Fury. that all over again. Ah. Kung Fury. Kung Watch Fury. Kung Fury. It's a 30 minute short. Uh, it has all the makings. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's criminal. Uh, it's criminal, as Donald Trump would say, <laughs> that that movie. Did not win an Oscar, and you're a criminal if you're listening to this for not writing a letter to the Academy insisting that they give it an Oscar. Uh, so, Peter, do you have any parting recommendations for the people uh, before? Sure. After this, we get into our shameless plugs. We get yeah, to plug yeah, all your yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would recommend since it's October uh, that everybody who hasn't see- watched Evil Dead Two, the greatest film of all time, uh, only uh, eclipsed by Army of Darkness, the other greatest film of all time since it's October. Um, and check out the trailer for Invincible, the newest show from M- Amazon Prime by the company I work for, Skybound, that looks like it's going to be insane. An animated, super violent superhero Ooh, show perfect. Uh, called Invincible. So I would recommend those two things. I'm a company man. 
And I would also say, if I have... Yeah, I'm you making, can recommend okay. as many things as you want. The Burger and Flung. <laughs> I like those at, recommendations. At Ariet slash Chugs. I hear that's very limited, that you have to know to ask for it. As, as ver- the kids I hear say, they're one of you know, 12. You know. yeah. One of 12. I had 12 of 12, I imagine. Yeah. Number 12 of 12. And they close. It's fantastic. It's an excellent. I would say it's the best burger. Better than anything I've had in Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, if you Kendall, you know. High praise. Yes. If you know, you know. Very good. Uh, um, shameless plugs. We'll let Peter go first with right. the shameless plugs. Oh, well, you can check me out at Attack Peter almost anywhere. Uh, Instagram and Twitter. Attack Peter Art on Facebook. Uh, I have a YouTube show every Thursday, uh, live stream uh, at Attack Peter on YouTube, where we sell new artwork, merch, and have go- uh, different guests on and different crazy shit tomorrow night, Thursday, which uh, I don't know if you'll hear this in time. Uh, we are reviewing all the different pumpkin beers that you can get at Total Wine, uh, and so I'll be a little bit lit before we drop our latest print tomorrow night, and uh, so yeah, check me out there. Get on that print. Watch out. Yeah. Shameless Mike, plugs. Shameless plugs. I got a lot of shameless plugs. Oh, wow. More than usual, huh? Yeah, more than usual. Um, Area today just released the information for its Thanksgiving to-go package, uh, which will be serving families of 4, 8, and 12. Um, Basically, we'll be curating your entire Thanksgiving for you, and we will give you instructions on how to cook that turkey. Hey, now. Hey, now. We've gotten to late night. We also will be uh, releasing information about Ariad's family family um, style menu that we'll be doing on Thanksgiving Day. That comes out next week. Um, our tasting menu for the month of October is completely sold out. We will be releasing the two dates for November, the day after the tasting this month. Uh, so stay tuned. We will actually be doing the same dishes from October in November. So please stay tuned for that. Um, and in very exciting news, we are attempting and hopefully executing reopening Nave, our seafood restaurant, in December. I repeat, in December of this year. Uh, so that will be a huge Huge, 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 huge deal for us. Huge problem. Huge heroin problem. Huge, huge Second Amendment. Huge believer. And you know, I'm a huge fan of your mother. As Nave has been closed for quite a long time, and we are excited to get that thing going once again. And in time for the holidays, we are relaunching Pig Inc., our merchandise line. Uh, at the beginning of November. Very good. So, stay tuned for new designs, new merch, and all the things for you to spend all your money on. All the money. All the money that's left over from your patreon.com slash (laughs) datamag commitments. And after buying Attack Peter's new print on Thursday. Where are you at, Estrella? (laughs) (laughs) Um, We also have that. We're doing the Estrella... Menu. The culinary journey. The it's culinary a journey. journey. It's a journey through, through Miami. Very good. Uh, so finally, Pancom Podcast and Date Shameless Plugs. You can find Pancom Podcast at Pancom Podcast on all the social media things. Datemag.com slash Pancom Podcast. Also, if you want to support the things that we are doing here as well as the rest of Datemag.com, that's Patreon, P A T R E O N, patreon.com slash Dade Mag. And also, you can buy magnets. You can still buy magnets for a buck <laughs> on the store at DadeMag.com. Dade Mike magnets. is getting a huge kick out of dollar. this. Dollar. For <laughs> it's, a buck. It's a fucking dollar, it's people. Fucking buy dollar. the fucking magnet. Think about fu- this. It's a magnet. You can unstick it and travel with it. So, mm. your mini fridge in every Portable. hotel you stay in during Portable the COVID magnet. time. That's not the best selling point. Yeah, you know, whatever. You can't right? even explain the science behind a magnet, and yet you can have it for a dollar. Well, you know, <laughs> as... You're fucking Harry Potter, bro. In the words of Insane Clown Posse, uh, magnets, how do they work? Um, is that a real quote? That's a real <laughs> lyric from an Insane Clown Posse song. Okay. From the quote of, of Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> to quote Insane Clown Posse. They cut your finger off and stick it in your the butt and glue it shut. The there it is! Hey-oh! And now... That's it. That's Bunkum <laughs> Podcast. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>